Namaste everyone. Welcome back to my Facebook page, Indigo Angel. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Indigo Angel. My name is Amanda and I consider myself to be a spiritual scientist. I would like to remove the title of healer from my business page. Um, simply because I am not a healer. I have decided. Uh, healing takes too much energy. Healing can only be done by yourself. You can only heal yourself. Only you have the capability to heal yourself. So when somebody comes to me for healing, my initial reaction is to just guide them back to themselves. Not saying that I'm abandoning one in their healing processes, but I definitely feel that it takes too much from me. Most people who are in a healing phase are drawing in energy. They're not in resistance, but they're holding a field that is accumulating energy. Right? Because they're looking for a source. They're looking for a source to fill that inner pain, wound, void. Through that process, one has to find the source within them, which is ultimately source to the universe, the infinite, the higher self. Uh, they have to learn to draw that energy from the earth, from the stars, from the moon, from their internal bodies is where that ultimately has to come from for one to fully heal. And so I am not a healer. I don't want to be a healer anymore. Uh, I at one point wanted to heal. I did. I wanted to heal. I wanted to do Reiki. I wanted to, and I still love Reiki, don't get me wrong. I will do Reiki. I love Reiki. I love giving Reiki. I love receiving Reiki. But I don't want the responsibility of healing others. I don't want that responsibility. I want the other beings to realize that they have the capability to heal themselves. And so I no longer consider myself a spiritual healer. I consider myself a spiritual scientist. And this is where it gets fun. And this is where it gets so amazing. Because once you go through these healing processes, once you heal, transcend, alchemically, morphologically, transmute the DNA, heal the DNA, repair the DNA, go through bioregenesis processes, which I am going to leave you with a technique for that today. Once you go through these processes, essentially, this is when cosmic energy becomes fun. And this is when starseed origins usually present fully. Now one is always connecting to their galactic family. One is always connecting to uh, spirit guides. One is always connecting to higher light intelligence. One is always connecting to the infinite realms, um, the planetary noosphere. One is always connecting to these things. They're just doing it on a different plane within their own 15 dimension, 15 dimensions with their, within their own consciousness. Okay, so these connection processes are happening on a higher dimensional scale. They're happening within the body, but on a higher dimensional frequency. So you are pulling in that consciousness from a different strand of the DNA, from a different sphere of the mind, which is typically a pre-conscious sphere, a subconscious sphere. It doesn't really come from the waking consciousness. It will, the waking consciousness is the last sphere of consciousness to catch up to the realization of these processes and of these connections to these higher dimensional connections to spirit. But essentially, you're waking up to realize that. You're, wake, you're attuning to that. So this is what galactic attunement is. This is what galactic resonance is, is you waking up to harmonize to that consciousness 
within your own body. Okay? Starseed origins are equivalent to quantum energy inside of the body. Everything that is happening on a galactic realm, everything that is happening on a higher dimensional realm of you. So all of these things, all of these spirit guides, all of these light beings, all of these interdimensional experiences that you're having are aspects of you. They are you on a higher dimensional frequency. You have a 12th dimensional version of yourself. You have an 11th dimensional version of yourself. You have a 10th dimensional version of yourself. You have a 9th dimensional version of yourself. All existing simultaneously, whether you're awake or whether you're sleeping, if somebody's sleeping, they are still going through these processes. They're just not aware of it. But it's still playing out within their toroidal field, within, within their morphogenetic field, within their perception of the reality as a whole. It's very limited. That's why the pupil is just so small because there's only so much source light and source vibration that one can actually consciously perceive if you haven't been awakened and especially if the body is sleeping then you can't bring that up through to see but essentially what all this is what all of this galactic attunement galactic resonance is is you're attuning to galactic frequency within the body how do we know if we're doing this how do we know well it comes through the heart it comes through the heartbeat okay so as the moon shifts through two days of 13, 20 degree celestial segments. The moon is essentially acquiring, integrating, absorbing cosmic energy, star particles, activated particle and anti-particle relativity. As we go through these cycles, we are integrating this energy, this light energy, into our body. So we're essentially attuning to all of this all of the time. We're not separated from it. We're going through it, but we chalk it off as whatever. Essentially, there's many different systems that you can follow to activate these dimensions within you. One of them would be the 10th dimensional system of the Kabbalah, so the Kabbalah tree of life, where there's 10 spheres. Um, there's also the Metatronic system, the 12th dimensional Metatronic system, so the 12th dimensional chakra system. And this is also connected to the Gregorian calendar. There's 12 months. This would be the solar way to embody photonic light and interdimensional existences and realms within your body. Now, there's a lunar way to do it, and this is pulling you into the original Earth template. So this is 13 dimensions, and this is going cosmic. Lunar takes you to cosmic, in my opinion. Lunar energy is the gateway to the cosmic realms. Lunar energy is what pulls you into that harmonization and into that galactic frequency. Now, can you wake up to your starseed origins at any time in your ascension? Absolutely. But it's a process of embodying source light. It's a process of embodying intelligence. It's a process of embodying more aspects of yourself as source energy. And so it takes time. It takes space time to integrate these awarenesses and this knowledge. It takes everything that you have um, and doing this consciously to fully come into these perceptions and understandings and awareness of what this actually is, what multidimensionality actually is, what harmonizing, attuning, and resonating to your starseed origins actually is. It's a process of attunement. It's a process of dropping density, and I don't mean physical weight, I mean emotional suppression. So if you're trying to get to quantum multidimensionality, if you're trying to get to highly expanded galactic, cosmic, photonic, geometric intelligence, you're going to essentially purify the body. You're going to go through a purification process. That process cannot happen until you are healed.
Everyone in this world is responsible for their own field. Everyone in this world is responsible for their own emotional body, spiritual body, higher dimensional bodies. Those that are going through healing have to learn how to absorb, integrate, and accumulate that energy from source, from actual God source, from universe, from higher intelligence, from earth, from Gaia, from the moon. They have to learn how to draw that in the body on their own. And that is something that I cannot do for them. That is something that I won't do for them. If anybody's coming to me for healing, I'm going to guide you back to yourself. I'm going to guide you back into yourself. I'm going to redirect you back to self-awareness because that is where true healing begins. That is where you have to start if you're on the healing process is inside of yourself. You have to go inside of yourself. You have to work through the emotion. You have to figure out where your mind and your heart is and that is where you start. Now, can you wake up and activate to your starseed origins while you're going through these healing processes? Absolutely, but... You're truly not going to understand the point or the purpose until you can get to a place that you've actually cleared that inside of yourself. Because the true gifts and the true expansion of galactic consciousness happens when you are already healed. It happens when you've healed the body. It happens when you have harmonized to the symphony that's flowing inside of you. Essentially, when, when you harmonize to higher intelligence inside of you, here's where it really activates, kicks up, awakens, and you go through these galactic transformations that are happening on a higher, even higher dimensional scale than the 12th dimension. You're pulling in energy essentially from the 12th dimension and above when you've gone galactic because essentially it's going inside of yourself. Galactic is equal to quantum inside of the body. So, <laughs> it's an attunement process. What is attuning? Let me tell you what attuning is. Attuning is becoming receptive, and attuning is becoming aware of God's source light consciousness inside of your body. Attuning is turning towards the emotion inside of you. So in order to attune, you have to turn towards the emotion inside of you. Here is where all galactic cosmic frequency comes from. Everybody's like running around thinking like, it's out here, it's outside. No, all cosmic energy is inside of you. It comes from the heart, it comes through the heartbeat. So even if we are integrating energy from our toroidal field and from our, the morphogenetic field and we feel like it's integrating through the crown chakra. Okay? It's still absorbing and integrating into the blood, into the DNA, which heightens the DNA. It, it activates the DNA. It illuminates the DNA. Many who are uh, going through ascension will say that they feel that their blood is glowing. That's literally how I feel when my light body activates. I feel like my blood is glowing. This energy comes in my body. And then my heartbeat pumps. So your heart is essentially like a stargate portal. Every pump, every beat is radial, cosmic, electromagnetic, charged cosmic particles that disperse through the body, okay? So here's where you harmonize to the resonance and the frequency of wherever the moon is in her cycle because the moon is an importing and exporting system for cosmic energy, okay? So this is where your origins come from because the moon is the womb. The moon is the water in the body. The moon is the blood. The moon connects to the element iron in your blood as well. So there's a diagmatic relationship with the moon. So not only are you diagmatically connecting with the moon, you're magnetically connecting with the moon. Your pineal is synchronizing to 
multiple dimensional ascension cycles within your first dimensional consciousness bands of your mind. The moon is the first and the second dimension. The moon is the underworld. And let me clarify because I've had some people reaching out to me like, what are, why are you talking about the underworld? Why do you keep talking about the underworld? The underworld, okay, within the third dimensions of planet Earth, you have the first, second, third, and fourth dimension that are primarily where, as a human, our conscious mind can perceive mostly, okay? The dimensions are your experiences. The dimensions are the frequency that you hold inside. The dimensions are... The dimensions represent an experience in a world within yourself. The first and second dimension is the underworld. The first and second dimension is your connection with the moon, which is your connection to the iron core of inner earth, okay? Inner earth is a portal system. The iron crystal core of earth is a portal system to the galactic realms. So you don't have to astral travel. You don't have to come out of your body at all to travel everything in the universe and in the infinite realms. You don't have to do any of that. It all comes from within. The moon has an iron core. The earth has an iron core. Okay? The moon and the earth are synchronistically and synergistically connected through this incredible magnetic planetary dance and harmonization and tidal locked force, essentially. Okay, so through these internal gateways is how you travel gateways and transits and universal realms, harmonic realms. Going inside of Earth is how you get to Andromeda. Going inside of Earth is how you're gonna to get to Sirius. Going inside of Earth is how you're going to essentially get to all of these gateways and all of these portal systems and structures. It's through the center crystal core of that planetary body or that stargate body. So let me clarify when I'm talking about the underworld. It's not that I'm conjuring up the devil and the demons from underneath. No. Going to the iron core is going counterclockwise in your Merkaba field. So your Merkaba is your six-pointed sphere. It's the ups, you know, it's the triangle, the masculine and the feminine triangle. Etherically, visually, meditationally, you activate this and it becomes your traveling system, which ultimately is internal. It is an internal traveling system. Okay, so you activate this. This Merkaba system, it's called Merkaba Mechanics, you have a counterclockwise spin and you have a clockwise spin. One is pulling in particle matter and one is pulling in antiparticle matter. The antiparticle matter is coming from the first and the second dimension, which is the subconscious cycles. Okay? This is the gateway to the etheric realms. This is the gateway to the astral realms. This is the gateway to the planetary realms. This is the gateway to the portal structures. It's through the first and second dimension of your subconscious. And so you have to go in to go through. And so this is why I'm always talking about the underworld is because that is the gateway. That is the access point to attuning to cosmic energies because this is how it integrates into the earth and ultimately into the human auric field, into the toroidal field, into the electromagnetic field, into your body's fully expanded field of consciousness. Okay, so you have electrically charged particles that actually float around into your field that ultimately come into the body. So you have to go through an attunement process to resonate and harmonize with galactic energies and with galactic frequency, which is a process of becoming aware and becoming conscious of the galactic energy inside of your body, okay? When you were a baby and you were forming in the womb, these are all biogenesis processes. These are all creation processes. 
What makes a starseed origin your origin? Okay, so when you were in the womb and you were forming and you were going through your pre-zygote stages, you were in the spirit's cradle, Lyra's, the spirit's cradle, it's called Lyra's cradle. Within that cradle, you were harmonizing, you were forming, you were integrating, all of this through your umbilical cord. Ultimately, I do feel that spirit incarnates through the umbilical cord. I do not feel like this is a crown chakra thing. I think this is a solar plexus thing, and that is why it's called a solar plexus, is because the soul integrates through the solar plexus. You're going to hear um, some noises here for a little while. I live in an apartment complex, and it's always very busy during the day. There's always people out mowing and taking out trash and you know, doing all these lovely things that make lots of noise. Um, I just miss, the, I miss being outside. I miss the warmth. I'm ready to be warm. It's not warm enough here yet for me to go outside and film. I actually went out yesterday and I sat in a field and I tried to capture the sunset, but it was just too windy and my eyes were watering and I was so bummed. But I know that it's coming, so I just have to be patient. Um, but ultimately, the soul incarnates through the solar plexus. The soul incarnates through the iron. Okay. When we die, the soul exits through the iron and through the pineal gland. It's an alchemical process that shifts inside the body. So the more iron that's in the body, the more that one enters into the bardo planes. It's the same as a star. When a star dies, it starts, all of its elements start to fuse into iron. All of its elements start to alchemically fuse into more of an iron before it dies. The more iron, the more that you're going through an underworld type process, or you experience the spiritual experiences that one only gets to experience when they are going through a death process. This is what ascension and awakening ultimately is, is your physical body is breaking down. This is what wakes you up. This is why ascension comes through trauma. This is why ascension comes through suffering. This is why ascension comes after one has spent their entire lifetime going out in the world, breaking down their physical body through addiction, through substance abuse, like through trauma, through abuse, through all of these experiences that ultimately one has to wake up to realize like, hey, this is my temple. We don't realize any of that stuff. We're not taught any of that stuff coming in this world. We have to learn this by destroying it and then spirit coming in the body and saying, this is what you are. You have a soul. You have uh, electromagnetic energy. You are a being with multiple dimensional realms inside of you and you are spirit. We have to go through these processes to realize our ascension, ultimately. So that's what essentially it is, is your, your physical body is breaking down for you to experience and go through a bioregenesis process, which is repairing and healing the DNA. This is why I'm no longer going through those processes of healing and repairing the DNA. I mean, I am going through those processes always. But not in the sense that that's where I currently live. I don't live there anymore. I don't live in a healing process anymore. I live in a process of consciously doing this now. Actively doing this now. Um, that's why I do so many invocations. That's why I do so many activations. Is because now it is fun. Now I get to play in it. I get to play in magic. Because now it's not about healing. I've transcended healing inside of myself. Even though I'm always technically healing. 
it's always technically true and not true at the same time. Everything in the universe is true and not true at the same time. So ultimately, one has to understand the 15 dimensions within the psyche. I told you there's a 10th dimensional system, there's a 12th dimensional system, and there's also a 15 dimensional system, which is first and second dimension are the, are the primal life force, the connection to the moon, the connection to the underworld, that would be inner earth, okay? And this would be absorption of photonic light. This is where we absorb. Then we get into the third dimension where we're on earth, okay? So this would be um, where we transmit photonic energy, where we transmit light consciousness, light source energy. Then we have the fourth dimension, which is the parallel earth, which is Tara, which is reflection. So we're reflecting this energy, which is ultimately connected to our higher harmonic universe, which once you go fourth through sixth dimension, fourth through sixth density, you become aware of that higher harmonic universe. And so you actually have a new earth. You have new earth where you're literally walking around on new earth, which is the fifth dimension. So there's all of these different dimensional understandings and frameworks of self inside of yourself. You are the planetary bodies. You are the stargates. They are all an aspect of your inner body, of your inner world. So essentially, attuning is becoming receptive and attuning is becoming aware. Attuning is turning towards the emotion inside of you, and this is how you connect more to your starseed origins. This is how you connect more to your galactic self. This is how you bring your galactic consciousness inside of your body, is you have to turn, turn towards that emotion inside of yourself, and you harmonize with that. You resonate with that. You have to drop density, which is emotional suppression. You have to heal, which is healing all of the trauma and all of the physical abuse that you went through. You have to heal these aspects of yourself and then you have to drop density. You have to clear it. You have to clear your Akashic records by emotional outbursts, crying, purging. You have to actually purge this out of the body. You have to cry. You have to scream. You have to consciously go through your victim mentality, okay? You have to consciously go through uh, these lower dimensional frequencies, emotions, and vibrations within yourself. You have to consciously do this. You have to accept a lot. You have to surrender a lot and you have to go through these processes, but you get there. I mean, you get there, it's, it's, and you're never not going through it. Uh, we're ascending and descending with the planet, and so we're not always on a gamma frequency. We're not always on a delta, on a beta, on a theta wave, okay? We're sometimes riding waves that are static, static electricity. As, a, as an awakened being, though, you're conscious of that. You're going through those processes consciously. So it's not... You're aware. So you clear it. It doesn't attach. It doesn't linger. It doesn't stay. It's, it's a clearing process. Okay, so... Essentially, you attune more to these frequencies, you attune more to these galactic energies inside yourself. Like I said, it's a process that happens pre-zygote, happens in the womb, begins happening as soon as you have the quantum from your mother and you have the quantum from your father. You're going through biogenesis processes, you're going through, pre -cre you're going through creation processes. So... In the womb, you're harmonizing to these galactic energies, you're harmonizing to your origins. Okay, so this comes in in a galactic crystal seed forms of consciousness. So every star seed on Earth is a hybrid star seed. Every star seed on Earth, every being on Earth has a birth date, has a birth time, and has a birth location. They are a hybrid. You pull the natal chart, there are how many positions in the tropical? One, two, three, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, you know, all the way through your, your north node, your south node, your midheaven. Okay, all of those planetary positions are where 
a part of your incarnation. They were a part of your um, incarnation from your starseed origin. They all had something to do with it. They are all portals. They are all stargates. They are all gateways that you use to incarnate from these places. From Orion, from Syrian, from Andromeda, okay? They are all higher intelligent beings. They are all higher source energy beings that are a part of you and you are not separate from them. So we use these systems to incarnate into onto Earth. And so that's the beauty of it is you are an accumulation of cosmic energy. You are an accumulation of galactic crystal seed forms of consciousness. You are an accumulation of multiple, multiple origins. So every star seed on Earth is a hybrid. So how do you resonate with this if you've just come into this awareness is know that it's not outside of you. Know that this is not outside of your body. This is inside of your body. And it's an attunement process through your heart. Your heart is the Stargate portal. For me, I resonate to the galactic frequency with the moon. I resonate with it through the shifts and the radial wave infusions. So as the moon shifts through these segments in the sky where she's importing and exporting cosmic energy, that's when I attune to it. That's when I feel it come through the heartbeat. I feel it come through like a radial blast of gamma energy that pretty much just takes over my body. And I know consciously I'm getting images and imprints of Syrian energy, goddess energy, water, cetaceans, dolphins, whales, you know, whatever it is. And then I know I'm aligning to Syrian. I don't need a calendar to tell me. I don't need any outside source to tell me that I'm coming upon a Syrian activation because I already start going through it three weeks before it's even actually initiated on a calendar. And that's the cool thing about it. So I hope I answered anybody's questions today. I kind of just got on to rant. This is totally a starseed blog today. I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, I did want to let everybody know that I am going to have a special guest on my channel that I am just beyond excited about. His name is John Shinesi, and he wrote a book called There is Something About the Moon. So I'm going to be interviewing him on Saturday. I'll have that video posted on Sunday. But basically, it's an incredible book. Um, there's already so much in it that I didn't know that I'm reading, and I'm like, wow. Um, basically about talk it really goes into the um how the moon formed and how the moon was actually a living being prior to earth and all of these things so if you want to learn about that i suggest you get that book and i just wanted to say thank you so much for watching i hope that this video helps somebody out there who maybe just received a reading from me and is a tuning not tapping but tuning into their galactic origins, their galactic frequency, and their galactic harmonizations. And I just want to say, if you're consciously trying to make contact with your ET origins, like the light beings, the councils, the, the guardian alliance, which is um, a council of 12, okay, so a lot of people don't really know about the guardian alliance. The guardian alliance is 12 councils of starseed origins so that represent a density on earth so you have the 10th 11th and the 12th density which is all lyran syrian predominantly lyran all of these densities represent a sphere of consciousness of galactic consciousness within the earth and so that is essentially what the Guardian Alliance is, is it has been a treaty or a covenant that 12 founder lineages came together and said that they would guard humanity and they would essentially work in service for humanity. That is what the Guardian Alliance is. And so anybody can connect to the Guardian Alliance, anybody can attune to these councils, Anybody can attune to this galactic frequency inside of themselves, but they have to heal and then they have to purify. 
heal, drop density, and purify the body. If you're not going through these bioregenesis processes, contact with your ET origins is most likely not going to happen. Just because there is a divine order in how this ascension presents essentially inside of you. So I just wanted to give you a technique to help you connect more to your ET origins, uh, your councils, your guides, your galactic energy inside you. And this is a bioregenesis technique that you can use. This is a fifth dimensional technique and this is creating a platform to connect to your fifth dimensional self. So it's a visualization technique. I suggest you do it every single day if you're having trouble connecting to your higher self or connecting to your guides or connecting to this interdimensional aspect of yourself. And so what you wanna do is you want to form essentially like a blue ball that you visualize coming down your crown chakra and you take this blue ball and you take it down your meridian lines and you take it down your uh, shashamna for all of the kundalini yogis and you bring this ball down into your body, you bring it down into the spine, and then you bring it back up into your pineal, into your third eye. It's a blue orb, okay? You want that orb to then flatten like a pancake, and it becomes a disc, a rotating blue disc. Then you want to imagine a version of yourself, like a teeny tiny little version of you, and you want to place that version of you on that disc inside of your pineal. So you have a flattened blue disc with a teeny tiny version of you standing on that disc. This now has become your fifth dimensional point of contact, okay? So you create this platform for contact. You create this platform for connection to your origins, connections to your star family, to your ET, race and lineage create this platform for them to come and contact you on this is basically you saying like hey the door is open to my higher self i am creating a gateway i'm creating a platform for contact and then you go through these visualizations morning and night primarily it's going to be best if you do it before you go to bed right as you're falling asleep, that's the best time to do it. And you just make that intention that you're open to that contact. So, it assists one with connecting to their higher dimensional version of themselves. It assists one with connecting to their starseed origins. It, because it's, you're basically opening up that perception of being open to the contact, which is contact within yourself, ultimately, but you have to provide a platform for that contact to occur. And it's just a, it's just a method, a methodology that you can use. It's one that I really enjoy. I liked, I really enjoyed creating a fifth dimensional point of contact. So just create a little version of yourself and set it on that blue disc. That's your fifth dimensional point of contact from now on. And you can use that to connect to your starseed race, starseed lineage, starseed heritage, starseed origins, your ET uh, guides, spiritual guides, light beings, all of it. So try using that technique. It might help you. Stay tuned to my channel so you can see my interview with John Chinesi. And um, I will look forward to speaking with you soon. Namaste. And I hope everybody has a beautiful day.